Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, still on industrial electronics and one. Uh, in this platform, we have some of the questions that we are going to focus on, a continuation from the question paper that we were working on June 2022. Uh, in this part, we are now on the last question, which is question five. On 5.1, we are given uh, to choose a term from column B. So our answers are supposed to be from column B. Okay. Uh, that matches the description in column A. Okay, so we're going to write either A up to K from what we are given A up to K. That's nine marks for that. All right, so let's start with 5.11. That is what we have on 5.11. An atom that has three valence electrons. What is that? That has got uh, three valence electrons. So the three, that is tri. If it is uh, five, that is penta. Valent. So this one is a trivalent. And where do we have our trivalent? We have got uh, trivalent on uh, F here. Okay, so this was going to be F. 5.12 pure semiconductor material. Which one is a pure conductor material? Remember, I've got extrinsic and intrinsic. So the pure conductor, that's the intrinsic, this one. So this one was going to be a D. Okay, can be used as a switch or an amplifier. Okay, that's actually a transistor. A transistor can be used as a switch. It can be used as an amplifier. All right, so we have got a transistor here on G. All right, so that's a G here. 5.14, the process of adding impurities to pure silicon. What is the process that we use to add uh, impurities to, 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 to pure silicon that is doping. So do we have doping here? Doping, 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 yes, doping on K. So here we've got our doping here on K. So this was going to be K. All right, 5.15, yes, a charge of negative 1,6 times 10 to the power of minus nine. What is it that has got a negative charge of uh, negative 1,6 times 10 to the power of uh, minus nine. There we must have an electron, okay? Because it's a negative. So here we do not have, let's check our answers because the one that we can use so far is electron. Let's check again. All right, that's the only answer that we can have. Since it has got a negative charge, so it's going to be electron. If it was a positive here, then it was going to be a proton. But since it has got a negative charge, so that's an electron. That's the best answer that we have so far here. So that's a J here. Uh, we do not have like a specific one. Which one is it? But we are just taking as an electron. Okay, 5.16. The potential difference of a battery is in an open circuit state. What is the, what is it? All right, the potential difference okay, of a battery in an open circuit state. Okay, that's the electromotive uh, force. That's the only answer that is good here. So we've got electromotive force, which is on uh, C. All right, so this is going to be C. Okay, 5.17 conducts when forward biased. Which one conducts when forward biased? That's supposed to be a diode. We have a diode here, a PN diode. Okay, so that's a PN junction diode, which is on A. So our answer there is going to be A. Okay, uh, 5.18 has no charge. Remember, if we are talking of no charge, that's uh, we are talking about a neutron or nucleus. Okay, that's a neutron there, which is H. Okay, 5.19. Not a good conductor or a good conductor. It's not a good conductor or it's a good conductor. So it's like a neutral, whereby where, 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 where you talk of a neutral. So that's a semiconductor. Uh, that's the one that is the best that you can use. If it is a conductor, if it conducts, then it's a conductor. If it is not conducting, it's an insulator. So the best answer here was a semiconductor, which is on E. So this was what we had. Conductor is not going to work because that. That part is not, it's conducting, not conducting at the same time. So uh, the best answer was a semiconductor there. So that's what we had on this part and we've got nine marks just to mention this part. Okay, 
On 5.2, name three types of capacitors. There are so many capacitors that we have, but here we are asked to name just three. Okay, so I'm not going to waste much time. I'm going to show you list of capacitors that we have. So we've got air, mica, paper, telephone, uh, polystyrene, ceramic, aluminum oxide, tantalium oxide. So uh, all those be tallium. So these are types that you can have when you're dealing with capacitors. So any of those three, or there can be others, uh, let us know on the comment section that is about capacitors that you know or that we have so that it can help others also. All right, um, on 5.3, we are given that there are two capacitors, C1 and C2, with values of six microfarads, three microfarads respectively, and are connected in series to a 600 volt supply. Remember, yeah. capacitors, they oppose resistors. If they are connected in a series, they act as resistors in a parallel. All right, so the first question was calculate the total capacitance. Okay, so like I said, if we are dealing with capacitors in series, they act like resistors which are in parallel. So we are going to use the parallel combination. So if we are to use that combination, that means, uh, okay, let's just put our calculations here. I think it's going to be fine. So this is 5.31. So we need the total capacity. So like I said, we are going to use uh, like parallel resistors. So which means we are saying one over CT is equivalent to one over C1 plus one over C2. C2. Or we can just say CT is the product over sum, which is C1 by C2 over C1 plus C2, which is the product over, over sum. So any of those guys, it can actually help. So CT is going to, I'm going to use the product over sum because just have, uh, it's simple here, six and three. So we have got six and three here. That's six times three over six plus three. Okay, so from our calculator, what are we going to have here? Six by three over six plus three. So this is six plus three, which is two. So we are going to have two microfarads. So like I said, you can use the, the, the part of one over C1 plus one over C2. Still, you must obtain the same answer because it's going to be like this. Uh, let's do it here. One over CT is equal to one over six plus one over three. All right, let's see what we have from our calculator. If we are to add one over six, one over six plus one over three, this is going to give us one over two. So that means uh, one over CT is one over two, all right? Uh, one over the total capacitance is equal to one over two. So to find CT, just divide by one, divide by one. So if you divide by one, you're going to have CT. If you divide by one, you're going to obtain two. That's one divided by one over two, that's a two. So it's going to be two microfarads. So we've got the total capacitance there. All right, uh, 5.3 to the total charge. Okay, since we are given a voltage here, uh, that means we can have our total charge because we know that the formula for total charge is given by uh, the capacitance times the voltage, but we are going to use total capacitance, total voltage. So that's QT, which is uh, the capacitance that we got here of two microfarads, but we know that micro, that's 10 times 10 to the power of minus six, 10 to the power of minus six. So we're going to have two times 10 to the power of minus six times the total voltage, that is the one that we are given here, that is connected across a 600 volt DC supply. That is the total voltage of the circuit, which is 60. So if we multiply by 60, we are going to have the total charge for the circuit, which is, all right, let's just multiply here, two times 10 to the power of minus six multiplied by 60. That's uh, 1,2 times 10 to the power minus four. 1,2 times 10 to the power minus four uh, coulombs. Okay, remember this is charge which is measured in coulombs. So you can even leave it like that. If you want to convert to milli coulombs, remember milli, that's times 10 to the power minus three. So you multiply by the opposite of this minus three, which is times 10 to the power of three. So if I multiply this by 10 to the power of three, my answer is going to be in milli, which is 0, 
one two something like that so if you want to write it like that 0 0.12 millicoulombs but you can even leave your answer like this all right so that was the total charge for the given circuit we move on to 5.4 draw a neat fully labeled diagram of a full wave rectifier employing a bridge take note it must have a bridge rectifier so remember we've got a full wave with two diodes but this one with a bridge that is, we are supposed to have four diodes there. The capacitor filter, the load resistor, and the input and output waveforms must be shown. So all this has to be shown in the diagram. All right, so this is what we have for the full wave rectifier, which is a bridge. So we are going to have the first diode, D2, D3, D4, the capacitor, the load resistor, and not forgetting the AC input. So the, for the waveform, we are going to have the input, which is a uh, sine wave. That's a sine wave. That's one that you're having here as the input. And the output is now a DC, you're having some ripples. We need it because we'll be doing that filtering part until it's a straight DC that we know. So that's the second diagram. Make sure that you clearly indicate uh, the diagram properly, the connection of diodes properly indicated. So that's what we had on question 5.4, which marks the last part of the question, having uh, 26 marks on this question. That's a total of 100 of the whole question paper. So these are the typical questions, and that's how they ask these questions and uh, how you're supposed to answer these typical questions. So get used to these questions by revising as much as you can, working from question papers, textbooks, and also these uh, online videos that we have uh, from Amazon African Motives. Uh, we have all these so that you can uh, prepare yourselves for the exams which are ahead of time. So that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.